Tim, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit what you're doing. Hi, I'm uh, Tim Mask. I'm a vice president with Maris Weston Baker, but I'm also um, also started a commission. It was originally called the Mississippi Brain Drain Committee, and it is specifically to address um, keeping our best and brightest students here here in the state. A project that uh, has been started as part of Fast Forward is Kids Code Mississippi. That is exactly what it sounds like it is. It is encouraging awareness, education of digital literacy, the ability to, to write code among kids, and, and not necessarily teenagers and college kids, even though we need that. We're, we're focusing on elementary and middle school age kids. Um, as I said, it's, it comes under the, uh, the Fast Forward initiative. Um, and I think, I think it's natural that it comes under that because let me hit you with, um, hit you with a few numbers here and explain why. 1.4 million. That's the number of computer programming, computer science jobs that I believe it's Pew Research forecast will be um, available in the United States by the year 2020. 1.4 million. 400,000. That's the number of students currently in computer science programs that would qualify for those jobs. So we've got a one million job gap. That's a huge opportunity. That is a huge opportunity. Those are knowledge workers. Those are high wage earners. I'm going in descending order on my numbers this morning. 26. That's the number of states plus the District of Columbia whose education systems count computer science as a core math or science. We're not one of those states. And I think for anything to happen to, fill, to help us be a major factor in filling those knowledge, that knowledge worker gap, we have to change that. We have to get on the board and count computer science as a core math or science. One, one is the number of students in Mississippi last year, or I believe it was year before last, that took the AP computer science exam. One student in the entire state. And it's kind of funny, this is the headline that we got. Now remember, one student, but the headline we got was no girls, blacks, or Hispanics take AP computer science exam in some states. Mississippi and Montana were the two that was named. Now I think that's a bit um, not being able to see the forest for the trees. <laughs> You know, yes, no minorities, but one student statewide took it. And I think that a lot of that goes back to there's no incentive to teach it. There's absolutely no incentive to teach it to include it in the curriculum right now. That's one project that Kids Code Mississippi is really pushing for, for getting computer science counted as a core math or science. Because I think, I like to say, we, if we want to educate our kids in digital literacy, we need to subsidize it. And I don't mean subsidize it with dollars. I mean subsidize it with incentives. Give a reason to teach it, to teach it from a young age all the way up through, all the way up through school. Um, some of the projects that we're working on um, under, the, under the, uh, the Kids Code Mississippi banner are to stage coding workshops. We did this um, on November the 3rd in coordination with, uh, with MDE. We had, I think it was uh, 46 or 47 schools participate statewide in doing an hour long coding workshop, uh, middle, middle, schools, uh, middle schools across the state. We're encouraging stu uh, schools to sign up to participate in the Hour of Code. That happens every December. It is, um, it's sponsored by an international organization, code.org. There's an opportunity to win grant money if your school participates. We actually did have a school last year in Mississippi that won, it was Highland Elementary in Ridgeland, won $10,000 worth of computer equipment for uh, participating in the Hour of Code. Looking at, had been talking with uh, Roberto and a few others about staging some summer, summer boot camps for kids um, where we come in uh, and, and they may be mobile and teach them programming languages like Scratch, the basics of programming, that whole idea of computational thinking to really raise the awareness level, the abilities of kids to perform uh, in a digital environment, to be digital literate. Um, and a, a big thing 
I think is promoting what I'm going to call retail awareness of coding. Why in the world would a kid need to learn how to read and write code? A lot of people think it's too technical. It's not something that we need to be that we need to be involved with. I've said I've had people tell me, well, kids need to learn how to read and write English or language before they need to re learn how to write code. And yes, that is true. But I encourage everyone to think about code as a language. Code is the one common tongue that is spoken across the world. And it's not just writing computer programs and writing apps for your phone either. The, there's been a big story in the news lately about all the, the robots that Amazon is, is making to do, their, to do their shipping and their logistics. Somebody's got to program those robots. And it's going to take 1.4 million people to do that by the year 2020. We've only got 400,000 people involved in, those, in that curriculum right now. I think it's a huge opportunity with what C Spire is doing, with providing a, a broadband environment for our state. I think we can be really on the leading edge of pushing ourselves into a knowledge economy with full-fledged knowledge workers. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll go ahead and move.